Dr. Peace. <laughs> seven years. Seven years. Hey, that. I'm Dr. Sandy Peace. I'm so, 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 so excited and scared as heck that I'm here. It doesn't feel real. I think I've dissociated. I'm back. But I do. So here I am. I'm going to go back to the beginning for a second because. For me, it's really amazing that I'm here because I was born to a teenage mom who was on welfare, trying to support two kids. And I'm gonna cry, I'm not gonna be ashamed. <laughs> and my grandma's here, she helped raise me too. She was actually the age a woman should be, maybe, when having a kid. I'm, I'm the age, right now, 36, that she was born. And so, Grew up in a little, little, tiny, 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 tiny town in Minnesota, 60 people. I didn't know anything about the world. I didn't meet a Jewish person until I was 17. And I thought that I, I really, I wanted to know people. I wanted to know myself. And I always felt like a weirdo. So today I'm coming out, I'm a weirdo, everyone. Woo! Woo! And my family I started shaving my legs again. I played beach volleyball. I'm a weirdo. And, yeah. um, I used to dwell on all this pain. Oh, I'm a woman. I can't play football. They wouldn't let me play football. They wanted to buy a chest pad. I didn't have a damn chest. I just wanted to play football. And I remember my mom, um, when I got a letter jacket, I wanted the boys' letter jacket. And they wouldn't let me because I was a girl. That was my first social justice moment. When my mom wrote a letter to the governor and said, they're denying my daughter this right because she's a girl. And you know what? The next year I got my jacket. <laughs> and every girl in that school just got that jacket. <laughs> and so I went to college and I double majored in psychology and religion. I don't know what's going on. Why? Those don't go together. And then when I graduated, I, I went into civil engineering. <laughs> so I spent eight years in the civil engineering world, but my heart kept pulling me back to psychology. It was like Jonah in the belly of the whale, and like God just said, you gotta be a psychologist. I'm like, no. So you gotta be. I'm like, I like making money. No, you gotta be a psychologist. I, I really like money. I like money, making money. And God's like, no. So I quit making money and I started taking out lots of money to pay for school. And my mom always said, you'll appreciate your education more if you pay for it. And I say, I would appreciate living in a country that paid for people to be educated to help other people. That's what I would say. I think that's a story for people who have So I got to JFK. I thought I knew all about myself. I did not know anything about myself. They deconstructed instructed me. I am now more fully aware of my weirdness. Yeah. I have found other people who are weird like me. And I have also become more fully aware of my privilege. That one of the main reasons I'm standing here, even though I grow up poor, is because I am white. And not that's not all of me, though. There's so many pieces of me, and it's hidden. It's hidden on the camouflage. But I want to thank you all, starting with Kyoko, who broke me down and built me back up. I want to thank all of you for helping me see the complexity of who I am, and to help me see the complexity that we all are, and that when I work with my clients and one of that gets missed, that I can talk to them about it and see the sigh of relief when they see that I get it, that they see that we get it. They're relieved. I'm relieved. Up here and can say I am a weirdo. Yes. <laughs> and um, I do have to thank on that. I have to sing a song. I can't not leave here without singing a song. <laughs> <laughs> and this song was inspired by Alette, who also had inspired me to um, pre present at a conference with her. And it was a groundbreaking moment uh, with Rebecca. She's here somewhere. It's hard to finish the and this song came out of our preparation. And we were talking about privilege and oppression and therapy. And I identify as bisexual. And so I was talking about LGBTQI. 
And everyone's like, what does that mean? I'm like, well, I need to sing a little song and teach you all what it means. L-G-B-T-Q-Q-I. Ready? Here it comes. L-G-B-T-Q-Q-I. I don't know what it means. If you want to know, then don't be shy. Just sing along with me. L is for lesbian, butchers, femmes, and dykes. Gay can mean everyone, but usually it means guys. B is for bisexual, like ice cream with a swirl. T is for transgender, are you a boy or a girl? Q is for queer and questioning for those who don't want to be defined. I is for intersex, blurring sex and gender lines. Now you know what the letter is, <laughs> it's not a mystery. LGBTQQI, sing along with me. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited that we're done, and we can do this work that we're so passionate about, and that we can do it with an understanding of how our privilege affects people, and an understanding that we can use that privilege to make sure everyone has access. <laughs>